Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about timers in our CP1H Omron PLC. And well, the first thing we'll do is go to the operation manual, or, sorry, the programming manual. It's W1451-E1. And what you'll see is we'll go over to section 3-5, which talks about timers and counters. Uh, we're going to focus strictly on timers today. And in there we have um, a series of basic uh, uh, timers. We have a regular timer, we have a high speed timer, a one millisecond, an accumulative, a long timer, and a multi output timer. And you'll notice that onto the right hand side of this we'll have a TIM and then a TIMX. Now the difference between the two is that the regular timer uses BCD code for its uh, set value and the X actually represents the binary code for its set value. So again, they're the same instruction. It just means that they're using um, a different um, uh, code for their set value of that timer. So if we use binary, we can get a little longer timer than just a regular one. All right. So we're going to do some examples of all of these six different ones. And you'll see there's 12 instructions, but we're going to do the six basically because the difference is uh, mute, really. And when we're dealing with timers, we should always deal with timing charts and, and timing diagrams. And we have an excellent blog, it's an uh, excellent thread um, that we've posted before. It's called The Secret of Timers, and I'll put a link at the bottom of this uh, video here so you can review that. And it'll give you a really good explanation of how timer and using timing charts work. So let's dive right in. And what we'll do is we will call up... Uh, our program and currently right now I uh, can see that I'm online and communicating to the controller and um, and we tell that right here again we can we've discussed this previously in some of our episodes so you can go back and review how we actually do that and I have up on my screen here we have a timer and I call it on delay timer so the on delay timer, and I can use this with my timer, my high speed timer, and my millisecond timer. The only difference between the three is the timing base rate that we use on the controller itself. The regular timer uses a 0.1 second, the high speed timer uses a 0.01, and the millisecond uses a 0.001 of a second time base rate. So what you'll see is I will um, energize this this first uh, input. I'll set that on, and when I do so, the timer starts timing down. We have it set for 10 seconds because it's a 0.1 second time base, so 100 represents 10 seconds. As soon as that energizes or finishes timing, it turns on my timing contact, which then turns on my output, which you will see coming on right on my PLC there. So that's my on delay timer. And most timers that we deal with right now are non-memory attentive. That means that if I lose power to the PLC or um, I go from uh, monitor run back to program mode, then the timer uh, present value is eliminated. And the present value is the running down of the timer, the actual timer itself. And then the set value is always what we want the timer to time to. So if it's we have the number here is uh, the number 100, that really represents 10 seconds. And that is the set value of that timer and timer zero. In the CP1H, we can actually have 4,096 of these timing numbers. So that's the on delay timer. The next one that we are deal with is an off delay timer. So what we'll do is uh, let's let's eliminate this screen window or project tree, and we can see this a little better. So what we'll do is we'll turn this on. Set that on. When we do so, we have the output on. The output seals in, and it seals in. And the only way to stop it is through this normally closed. Uh, timer, which are hold off time. So you'll see that my output on my PLC is energized, and now I have that output on. Now, when I turn this off, what will happen is that output will remain on, 
the timer, because it's off now, my input contact here um, is true, and it will start timing down for 10 seconds. Once that 10 seconds is over, it will open that contact up, which then should reset that. So when I lose my signal, it delays it for 10 seconds and then turns it off. So let's try that out. I'll turn that off. And sure enough, you can see my timer timing down. And once it hits the uh, zero mark, because they're decrementing here, you can see that sure enough, it turned that off. And so that's my output number two turns off. And that's my off delay timer. The next timer that we have is a flicker timer. Now the flicker timer, um, just means that we're going to cycle something on and off for a time frame. So it's going to be on for so long, then off for so long. On and then off. And what we're going to do is, is, again, we have this internal uh, contact bit here. When I energize it, it will go through the normally closed timer of the timer 3 and energize timer 2. When timer 2 exp uh, expires, it will turn on this one, which will then energize timer 3. Timer 3 expires, it opens that one up, which resets the whole thing again, and it starts over again. My actual output is timer 2. If I have timer 2 and not timer 3, it turns on my output 3. And I'll just move that up. There you go. So here's what we're looking for for our output. So we have timer two and not timer three. So what should happen is timer, uh, we turn this on, it will delay two seconds. It will turn on the output for two seconds. Then it will reset and do the same thing again. So let's turn that on. And when we do, you see that timing out. We can see our output uh, now turns on and then off. Then it goes on for two seconds, then off for two seconds. So again, the flicker timer. And what we'll do is just reset that. Turn that off. The next one we have is an accumulative timer. Now the accumulative timer um, will actually have a reset on it. So it will just continuously uh, increment as, as I go up, as the input is on. So in this case here, I will turn on this bit. And you can see my my timer is actually timing up. If I turn off the bit, it will stop, but it maintains its value until I actually hit the reset. And you can see that goes back to zero again. And even if I turn this back on again while the reset, you can see it doesn't doesn't continue timing unless I have the reset off. So let's turn that off. It will time up. And in my case here, we're actually looking for uh, 20 seconds. So 200 times 0.1 as the time base is 20 seconds. And when that happens, the contact or timer bit T4 will turn on. And then in turn, the output uh, 100.03 will turn on, which it sure enough it did. The next one is a long timer. Now a long timer, what it will allow you to do is actually put a, a value in that is extremely long in nature. So in our case here, what we have is uh, our present value comes from data memory 100 and our uh, set value comes from uh, data memory 110 and in 110 you can see that I could actually have um, eight digits long as a set value. In our case here that's a little too long for me to, to sit here and wait for it and it works out to be something like uh, two or three hundred days of, of timer if you want. And our output is actually used a channel instead of a word and it's the first bit of that output channel. So I used H0.00 um, which will come on when the timer reaches a reaches set value. So that's a long timer. It's just used for a very long time. So I'll set that on 
And when that comes on, we will now time down for 10 seconds. Once the 10 seconds expires, the H0.0 .0 bit will come on, and then my output will come on, which sure enough it did. The, the last timer that we are going to look at is the multi-output timer. This is kind of unique. In fact, what I can have is I can have up to eight different outputs um, firing off that same timer. And how I use it is I put set values in a series of, of memory areas. And so um, the timer itself, here's my uh, diff up, which actually just resets the, the timer. It's the eighth bit of the first word that I specify. And then the first uh, seven bits, zero to seven, um, or sorry, first eight bits, zero to seven, um, actually signified my output, and my output will then drive a physical output that I can have on my PLC. So here I have uh, uh, 300, so I turn this on, it resets it, it will then start timing up, or, or timing up, and as it reaches a set value for each of the predetermined set, set uh, words, it will then trigger those bits to turn on and off. And those bits themselves, if I look at my DM area, so let's turn back on this, we'll go to our memory area, and we just look at our data memory, and we said it's under 210. So it's looking for four seconds, then five seconds, then seven, then nine, then 10, then 12, then 13, then 15. So after 15 seconds, all my outputs will be on. So we'll just uh, minimize that, and we will see this in action. I will turn that on. And it starts timing. Now remember, the first one's after 40 seconds. So you can see as each... Um, set point is reached, it turns on the corresponding bit, and the output then turns on. So kind of a unique instruction, and you can see that on my PLC as the bits turn on and off. Now, a couple other things that uh, the PLC can do. In the, uh, we'll turn on the watch. In the watch, is where I can set values, but I do have system clock bit flags, and what happens is on these clock bit flags, you'll notice that um, we have a 0 0.02 second clock bit, we have a 0.1, we have a 0.2, we have a 1 second, and we have a 1 minute. And all these do is oscillate on and off for half that value. So if it's 0.1 seconds, it'll be on for 0 0.05 and off for 0 0.05. If it's on for 1 minute, then it's off for 30 seconds and on for 30 seconds. So it's a 50-50 duty cycle. And these um, five bits are available through our programming and we can use them for uh, flashing lights, etc. in our program. And the last thing I'd like to talk about is in this CP1H, we do have a real time clock. And what I mean by real time clock is it has a calendar and date and inside here, we can see minutes, seconds. Um, we can see um, hour and day. And the last one here, we can see year and month. So it has already a built in there. We can use that in our program to determine when things happen or log information as we need it. And in order to set that up, if again we go back to our screen, our, our project window, and there's a PC clock area. You double click it, it will actually tell you what the computer's current time is right now and date, and what the PLC time and date is saying. In order to synchronize it, we can actually hit the synchronize and actually make them both the same, which we just did now. The other option we have under the PC clock is that we can actually set it manually. And in this case here, we can then um, set it to where we like. In this case here, we just set an hour or ahead. Again, we go back and we can sync it. So a very straightforward uh, calendar clock within our CP1H. 
So that's it for timers. Now all the links and documentation that I've mentioned can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. And if you like the video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information on YouTube just as you've done. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to accautomation.ca and subscribe to our website. And when you do that, you'll get notification every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.